Disclaimer. Some views expressed in this video are purely my own speculations and opinions. I do not intend to accuse any individual or entity. This content is for entertainment and informational purposes only, and it should not be considered as absolute facts. With that out of the way, let's get on with it. So yesterday I was sad and lonely at 4am watching a YouTube video as one does. And it was a Vsauce video titled, Will We Run Out of Names? And I was like, hold on, there's something important to talk about here. Right now, in America, there are 106 people named Harry Potter, 1007 named James Bond, and 8 people named Justin Bieber. There just aren't enough names to go around. There are more than 300 million people in America, but 150,000 last names and 5,000 first names is all you need to name nine out of every 10 of them. When are we gonna run out of names? I'm almost certain if you're watching this video, you have been in this situation before. You are trying to create an account somewhere on a social media or a website or whatever platform it was then you face the annoying note username taken and you find yourself forced to add many undesirable additional characters to your preferred username numbers random letters or symbols that overall ruin the aesthetic appeal of your handle which is rather annoying but overall not a big issue to normal internet users but here's the catch there is a collection of users online who do not want to give in to this reality and instead they wish to obtain the desired usernames regardless to stand out and express their personalities in digital spaces leading to a high demand for unique and catchy usernames and wherever there is demand there will be supply and that's how a new market was born the internet as we know it today have gotten to its shape after the development of the domain system dns by paul mccapitris in 1983 and most of the websites in that early stage were government or academic ones which required the use of usernames and passwords to make sure the individuals access their data and only theirs. And here's a list with the earliest registered domain names ever. Later, the National Science Foundation lifted restrictions on the commercial use of the internet, opening the doors for businesses and individuals to explore the potential of the World Wide Web, which created a conflict of interests. For example, a business named Target will probably run to the issue that Target.com was probably registered by someone in the past. So they will be forced to request a resale from the original owner. So in the market of trading names online, domain names were the first in the queue to be traded. For example, Business.com sold for $345 million in 2007. LasVegas.com sold for $90 million in 2005. Voice.com sold for $30 million in 2019 and Fun.com sold for $13 million in 2010. Generally every name that is basic and simple or a celebrity or a major brand name was an expensive domain. And the people that registered these domains back in the 90s made serious money selling them to other companies later on. Some of them were knowingly doing it, geniuses that saw this coming and made millions with it. And some just randomly registered something in the past that became a gold mine out of pure luck. We didn't actually come up with the name Tesla Motors. Uh, we didn't own the name. Uh, it was a, a guy in Sacramento came up with the name and, and owned the, the name and we had to buy it off him for $75,000. You wanted that name that badly? Yeah, the guy Sacramento really didn't want to sell us the, the name either. Um, I sent the nicest guy in the company to just go sit on his doorstep and not leave until he agreed to sell it to us. A sweet guy. The nicest, impossible to anger, nicest person. So eventually just the guy said, fine, I'll sell you the name. <laughs> if you leave my doorstep. Yeah, pretty much. Then later in 1997, SixDegrees.com was founded, where users could create profiles, connect with friends, and post status updates. The platform required distinct usernames for easy identification and communication among users, the first form of social media as we know it today, and at its peak it reached around 3.5 million users, which will make it nearly impossible to obtain usernames like John or at Black 
or at Veronica. This usernames that are easily remembered and naked without any additional characters are always the first to be claimed. With the rise of social media platforms and online gaming communities, individuals started realizing the value of short and memorable usernames, and when Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram appeared, the concept of OG usernames gained traction, referring to usernames created early on a platform, making them rare and desirable, and extremely expensive. Now the methods of obtaining these usernames might differ, you might have created it as a normal user early on, but most of the names on the market are not obtained this way, they are actually hacked and taken by force. This glorification of these handles is due to many reasons. The aesthetic appeal, these names are easier to find, they pop up first in searches, so their business value can be easily noticed. But this practice exists as well in video games. For example, back in 2009, just 4 minutes after account registration was added into the game, Nikika created his account, and this created a tremendous amount of sentimental value of the name. By being the first registered player ever on the game, this creates a wild demand for the name, and I am certain someone will be paying thousands of dollars to get his hands on the name. And this applies to many games online, for example the names of the best players in the game, or some players that unlock a certain achievement that is hard to do. Hi, this is Lizzie. Um, I was in Asheville, North Carolina for Labor Day weekend vacation. I think I was in the car and I wanted to Snapchat something. I'm pretty sure that I wanted to Snapchat a brewery that I was passing and send it to my brother because we had been there before. So then I get home that night um, back from Asheville, like eight hours in the car. I'm exhausted. And then I see three emails come in from Snapchat. One email says, your account has been logged in by a user on an iPhone 8. The next email says the password to your account has been changed. The next email says the phone number associated with your account has been changed. I wasn't like, oh man, something has happened. I, I was sort of like, oh wow, I guess I just got to like reset my password. But then at that very moment that I'm sort of starting to like process that, I get text messages. Lizzie gets these text messages, not through Snapchat, but through her phone. And the first one says, Yo, if you try to touch Snapchat Lizard or do anything, you're fucked. I'm just warning you. So Lizzie reports to Snapchat that her account's been hacked. She's getting threats from the person who took it. And they actually get the account back to her pretty quickly. The problem is that when she gets it back, all of her contacts are deleted and her archive photos are gone. So I told Lizzie I'd try and figure out who's behind this whole thing and just like help her get some peace of mind. So... I go to the Twitter of this specific person. Yeah. And the Twitter account is twitter.com slash Hades. Like hell? Yeah. Their Instagram is instagram.com slash fuck. And so at this point, I'm thinking this is a person who goes by the name Maxime, who just has like a bunch of boutique usernames on different social media platforms that are probably really hard to get. And I think that's why he would have targeted Lizzie, because her Snapchat handle is Lizard. Lizzie's story is unfortunately all too common for legitimate owners of UG usernames. Many may have experienced some of these wild situations, as some of them don't even realize they are sitting on an asset that's potentially worth hundreds, thousands, or even tens of thousands of dollars, or that they're prime targets for account takeover attacks, or in our coming story, some have faced way unfortunate outcomes. On News 2 at 4, we told you about a victim who found himself in the middle of a swatting call after he refused to give up his Twitter handle. He was part of a nationwide crime spree targeting people with rare usernames worth thousands of dollars. It was shocking news for 60-year-old Mark Herring, who lived here off of a sleepy country road in Bethpage. He went out the house with a gun because he heard someone was on his property. And he sees all these cops around him. And they ask if he is Mark Herring, put your hands up. So he tosses the gun away from him to show he's not a threat. Hands up. A full response from authorities faced the innocent grandfather who died minutes later. Well, I believe 
that he was scared to death and that is what caused his heart attack. This relentless hunt for these usernames shows that there is a real reward flipping them for the normal people and also for the hackers. Yet some people refuse to sell their handles even after being offered thousands of dollars. In 2018, Germany-based IT specialist Mark Douglas, known as at M on Twitter, turned down $15,000 for his beloved ID, saying, Honestly, I just can't quit part with it. First come, first served, I guess. And also the photographer, Jean X Wang, or at X, said no to multiple offers ranging between 10k and 40k because he didn't think they were legit and after all back in 2018 this practice was banned by twitter and people that jump on famous handles hoping for a checkout from a celebrity were simply robbed of their inactive accounts and they get handed to their proper owners the practice violates the company's username squatting policy which does not allow users to buy and sell handles at all but funny enough Fast forward to 2023, Twitter under Elon Musk decided to raise the revenue of the company. So they started by firing 80% of the workforce, which consisted of 6,500 employees, since their efforts were deemed as disposable. Then they started selling blue ticks for $8 a month, which honestly kind of defeats the purpose of a blue tick. But whatever, it's their company, right? Then something weird happened, something relevant to our story. Elon Musk throwing more up against the Twitter wall and just seeing if it sticks. The latest proposal outlined in the New York Times has Twitter considering selling usernames to generate some new revenue. Engineers have reportedly discussed running online auctions for in-demand names. Now, Elon tweeted last month that he wants to free up some of the 1.5 billion usernames that have remained inactive for a year or more. Many reports emerged saying that Twitter, or now X, decided to engage in the very activity they once prohibited. Insiders reported that employees have held conversations about selling some usernames. Engineers have discussed running online auctions where people can bid for the usernames of 1.5 billion dormant accounts, which I don't think is gonna be saving Twitter after all. That thing has become a cesspit of toxicity. But the final nail in the coffin isn't the double standard of prohibiting selling usernames for the people and doing that for your own sake. It's actually what happened when Twitter started its rebranding. You guys know how platforms own their accounts on their platform for big announcements. So naturally, after the rebranding to X, Twitter would need the username. And as we said earlier, it is owned by the photographer Gene X Wang since 2007. So Elon Musk sent him a check for $25,000, which he spent on a new apartment. Stop the cow. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course that didn't happen. We know earlier that Elon had this issue before, but I think now after being in control of the network, when they needed the username, they just sent Wang an email informing him of the change. So his username at X was taken by force and he was given the much longer handle at X with a bunch of random numbers. And in return for this robbery, or as Twitter sees it, inconvenience, he was offered some merch and a pointless visit to Twitter HQ. And now most of one letter Twitter handles or numbers are suspended or simply not available. You cannot make this up. Here's the guy if you want an OG at name. Here, I can show you all the at names he has. And if you want any of it. No, but he charges over a thousand. Like, if you want an OG at it, it's like a thousand or two thousand. But he, but he just sold me rice for really cheap. But his shit is like really expensive, so. Keep that in mind, alright? Like his shit is really expensive. Then Telegram joins the party in late 2022. It announces the launch of Fragment, a marketplace for buying, selling, privately trading and auctioning what it calls collectible usernames. And let me tell you, the method of payment in this decentralized market isn't Bitcoin or any requested method by the seller's own terms. It is Tawn, a cryptocurrency previously developed by Telegram back in 2020. And some of the most expensive usernames sold on the platform were new sold for 2.4 million dollars, Auto sold for 2.1 million dollars, and Bank sold for 2 million dollars. And lastly Doge, 
the cryptocurrency for more than half a million dollars. So we are supposed to believe that a company that was recently launched on 2013 didn't see the potential of these usernames and that random individuals around the world are selling these usernames for enormous profits. I'm sorry but this seems a little too shady or too good to be true. Let's take a look on the internet. I found this post saying, today Pavel Dorov just announced the launch of their dedicated platform to sell buy premium telegram usernames. Checking that list, I've searched for my channel's username and it says it's coming soon. Going back to my channel to make sure this username belongs to me, I've noticed that the channel was transformed into a private one without a username. I know posts like this don't prove anything, especially from throwaway accounts, but it for sure means something when similar claims exist on Reddit and in many other places on the internet. Telegram claims it is a policy against username squatting, and it seizes these usernames from inactive accounts and channels, but who do we believe here exactly? Telegram already has a weird policy, for example if your company is called Blue Line, and you own that username in at least two other platforms like Instagram and Facebook, you're free to call Telegram and claim the same username regardless of its current owner or the purposes he is using it for. Quite unfair if you ask me, and this certainly harms the credibility of Telegram. In conclusion, the world of digital usernames is just another hustle. People make a lot of money, people get scammed for a lot of money, people get hacked, and many other things. We might feel a sense of ownership, but companies like Twitter and Telegram can reclaim them at any moment, leaving you with nothing. Fighting over these handles isn't worth it. Moreover, they can just make you a target for spam, swatting, or hacking. And let me ask you, do you own a valuable username? If so, would you sell it? Let me know in the comments below, and check my channel for similar videos. Thank you for watching.